Hi folks, we're going to take a look at the uh, last topic for this unit, uh, which is a second type of annuity. Uh, but before we do that, let's just review our first uh, type of annuity, which was a future value. Okay, so the way this worked was this formula gave you the future value uh, when you deposit uh, regular amounts into an account over a certain period of time. Okay, so let's say R represents your regular payments and you're depositing, say, $100 a month for a certain number of years, and this formula here tells you how much money you're going to have in the account at the end of that time, including the interest. Okay, so what we're going to do is look at a different type of annuity, and this is called a present value. Okay, and let's uh, see how this works. So there's two ways this can work. One way is the present value represents the amount of money you put into an account now so that you'll receive regular payments later on. Okay, so let's say somebody is retiring and they put uh, $500,000 into an account. Okay, and R represents the regular payments that they receive every month from that account to live on. Okay, another way it can work is if you're borrowing money. So the present value would be the amount of money you're borrowing now, and then R would be the payments that you uh, pay, say, monthly to uh, pay off that loan. Okay, so R here, again, is your regular payment. So it's either the payment you're receiving from the, um, uh, from the account, or it's the payment that you're making to pay off your loan. Okay, and I and N uh, are the same as before. I is the interest rate per period, N is the number of payments. Okay, so we'll go through a couple of examples, and I'm just going to have you uh, fill out the solution as we go through. So let's see example one and see that it fits... Uh, what we've described above. Okay, so first example says Haroon will be traveling the world for two years. He hires a neighbor to look after his home while he is gone. The neighbor is to be paid $200 each month for the service. Determine how much money Haroon must deposit in an account now at 6% compounded monthly so that the neighbor can be paid for the two years of his absence. Okay, and then they want us to determine the interest that was earned. Okay, so this fits this scenario because he's putting money now, that's the present value, so that somebody can be paid regular amounts afterwards. Okay, so as with all these problems, the first thing I want you to do once you realize it's a present value problem is to list your variables. Okay, so here we have PV, okay, we have R, we have I, and we have N. Okay. The present value, we don't know that yet because that's what we're trying to determine, how much money he has to deposit now. Okay, So this is our unknown. What we do know is the regular payment that's going to be received. That's the $200 that's going to be paid to the neighbor. So that goes out $200. Okay? We have to find the interest rate per period. So remember that any interest rate that's given is always a yearly interest rate. But since it's being compounded monthly, we need to divide that by 12 to get the monthly rate. So 6% is 0 0.06. That's for the whole year. So we divide by 12 to get the interest for one month. Okay. Now we've seen this one many times. Okay. So you might even remember that this ends up being 0 0.001. Okay. Now let's take a look at the number of periods. Well, the neighbor has to be paid for two years but he's being paid every month. So 12 months in a year, so two times 12, there's gonna be 24 payments made from this account. Okay, so now that we've got everything set up, we're looking for the present value. Let's put everything into our equation. So present value is equal to, so regular payments, $200. Okay, in our bracket, well, we've got one minus, then one plus I to the negative N. So 1 plus i is going to be 1.025. And the exponent here, don't forget that there's a negative, not 24, but negative 24. Okay, and then all that over i, which is 0 0.005. Okay, so here, let's put that in the calculator. Okay, I'll do that with you here. So get your calculators out. Okay, and let's uh, calculate this here. Okay, so $200 times, now 
you're going to need to open up a bracket here. Okay, so 1 minus 1.005 exponent negative 24. Okay, don't forget to close the bracket in the numerator and then divide it by 0 0.005. Okay, and we end up here with our present value being $4,500. $12 and 57 cents. Okay, so this is the amount that Haroon has to put into the account so that I'll have enough money to pay off um, the neighbor $200 a month. Okay, but we have to keep in mind at the end of the uh, first month, when $200 is paid, there's going to be money left over in the account. That money is going to gain interest. So any, num any money that's left in the account is going to gain interest. So let's see how we can calculate how much interest was earned in all. Okay, so the first thing I want to calculate is how much money is actually going to be paid out. Okay, so I have 24 payments of $200 each. Okay, that's how much money will be paid out from the account. And from that, we're going to subtract the money that was actually deposited into the account. So this is Haroon's own money. So we're going to subtract that out because we're only interested in the interest. Okay, so let's calculate that. So let's figure out, first of all, how much money was paid out. So 24 times 200 equals 4,800. So that's the amount of money that was paid out. And we're going to subtract the amount of money that Haroon actually put in himself. Oops, that should be 12. Okay, so minus 45, 12.57. And we have here that he earned $287.43. Okay, so that means he didn't have to actually pay this money, okay, uh, to go towards the payments of the neighbor. This was earned in interest. Okay, so that was the amount of money he didn't actually have to put in himself. Okay. So let's move on to a second example. Okay, so if the teacher wants to uh, uh, maybe stop the video now to maybe go over the problem, if anybody has any questions, now would be a good time to stop um, and take any questions. Okay, so we're going to take a look now at example two. Let's see what example two uh, tells us. It says Eileen borrows $10,000 to purchase a car. So we see it's a little different, okay? There we were putting in money so that we could receive payments later on. Here we're borrowing money and we're gonna have to make payments to pay off the loan. So $10,000 is what we're borrowing, okay? She's gonna make weekly payments to pay off the car. So instead of monthly, it's gonna be weekly, okay? Over the next four years. The interest on her loan is 5.2% compounded weekly, okay? So you notice the uh, the period lengths are always the same as the compounding. Okay, so we want to determine the weekly payments and determine the interest uh, that she pays on the loan. Okay, so as usual, so first of all, we recognize that this is a present value problem because she's borrowing the money now and she's making the payments on it afterwards. Okay, so let's make a list of our variables. Okay, P, V, R, I, and N. Now here, this is a little different because we know what the present value is. We know that she's borrowing $10,000 now. So we have the present value. What we're looking for is the value of the weekly payments. What is she paying every week? So it's the R value that's our unknown. Okay, the interest rate here, well again, it's 0.052, 5.2%, but that is a yearly rate we need to figure out the interest rate per week. So we divide by 52. Let's say there's 52 weeks in a year. Here, this is actually a pretty easy division, 0 0.052 divided by 52. Okay, 0 0.001. Okay, and in terms of the number of periods, well, uh, she's taking four years to pay off the loan, and there's... Uh, 52 weeks in each year, okay, so we've got 
four times 52 equals 208. Okay, so now let's put everything into our equation. Okay, so let's recall what our equation looks like up here. I know you've got that on your sheet. So here now we know what the present value is. It's $10,000. Okay, the regular payment is what we're looking for. Okay, and then we have 1 minus 1 plus i, so 1.001 to the exponent of negative n, which is 208. Okay, and then all that is divided by i, which is 0 0.001. Okay, now we have to solve for r. In the previous example, pv was already isolated. Here we're going to have to isolate r. But we should do what we normally do in an equation we should simplify each side first. So left side, nothing else we can do there. But on the right side, I can actually calculate this quotient here. Okay, so let's start by doing that. So here, let's open up a bracket for the numerator. 1 minus 1 1.001 exponent negative 208. Close off the bracket for the numerator and then divide by 0 0.001. Okay, and we've got 187.71. Okay, so we got $10,000. R times 187.71. Okay, and now this is much easier to work with. In order to isolate R, we're just going to divide the left-hand side by 187.71. So 10,000 divided by 187.71. And so the regular payment is going to be, let's calculate that, 10,000, yeah, we got that right, divided by 187.71, okay, 53.27. Okay, so $53.27 will be the regular payment that she has to make every week to pay off this loan. Okay, now let's not forget that they also asked us to determine the interest. Okay, so we're going to do something similar to what we did before. Okay, $10,000 was the initial value of the loan. But of course, what she pays off will be more than $10,000 because she's also paying interest. Well, so let's figure out what she paid off first, which is $53.27 for every payment. And she made 208 payments. So two times 208. And then we're going to subtract what she actually received for the loan, which was $10,000. Like so. Let's calculate 5327 times 208. I already had it on my calculator. I don't need to rewrite it. And so here we have okay, what she actually paid was $11,080.92. And we're subtracting the $10,000 she actually received minus ten thousand dollars and so a thousand eighty ninety two thousand eighty point ninety two okay so this is what she had to pay in interest in order to borrow that ten thousand dollars for four years okay so just to recap here you can recognize a uh, present value problem when you're either putting in the money now or borrowing the money now and then receiving payments regularly in the future or making payments regularly in the future. Okay, that's it for now. Please work on the exercises assignment.